We introduced the concept of price elasticity of demand um, as the measure that economists use to keep track of how responsive consumers are to changes in price. Um, and at the end of the day, the price elasticity of demand is a ratio of the proportionate change in quantity demanded to the portion, proportionate change in price. I mean, that's what it is. Um, each, the, each of those, the numerator and the denominator, denominator aren't that hard. You put them together and, and they, they seem to get hard. Um, I guess the first question to ask is why do we care? Well, we care because with the supply and demand model that we studied last chapter, we gain an ability to predict the direction of changes in price and quantity. So, so I've got the gasoline market here. Um, let's just make up an event. U.S. gasoline market. Let's suppose there's a, a refinery fire, and, and um, there was one of these down in the Bay Area, and, and it turns out the West Coast market is... Um, dependent on, on many fewer refineries than the East Coast market. Anyway, so there's this refinery fire. Well, all right, so we know that that's going to affect suppliers' ability to get gasoline to market. There's going to be this supply event. We This supply-demand model gets us the ability to say, oh, yeah, price is going to go up. Quantity sold is going to go down. But when... Um, I'll go to a new page. You, we want to know what the size of those changes are, and the supply and demand model doesn't quite get us there. So, and, it, and it matters, right? Um, it matters for a few few reasons. One is, will price rise by a lot or a little? I mean, a, a, a jump from $385 per gallon to $390, not that big a deal. But if, if it's going to jump from, I think it, last time I drove by the gas station, it was $385 or so. If, if it's going to jump from $385 to $450, well, that's a big deal. And we, those are two very different cases, and we, we need to be able to predict uh, which one's going to prevail? And you know, same thing. Will quantity, in this case, uh, fall by a lot or a little? And then finally, if you were a gasoline company executive, uh, you'd want to know what uh, will happen. to revenue. And, and realize that with any supply-demand event, I'll go back a page, with any supply-demand event, you're going to get price, well, not, not with any, but any, any supply event anyway, you're going to have price go in one direction and quantity go in the other, other direction. So your, your revenue effect, revenue is price times quantity, one of those is getting bigger, one of those is getting smaller, which which effect is going to dominate? Well, we don't know just from this model. But once we have, informa once we have information on elasticity, well, then, then we're going to be able to say something about what's going to happen to revenue. So that, that I'll have a separate screencast on that coming up. All right, well, now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's define these things. And I know you've done the reading, and I know you already have, have worked at this definition, but just let's let's... Um, make it clear. The elasticity of demand, and I uh, represent it E super D, you can you know, call it E parentheses D as I have to do in my um, in, in future screencasts because I can't uh, get haiku deck that I use to make those images um, take lowercase and superscript and all that. It's, it's anyway. So I, I, I use that notation sometimes. Uh, but anyway, whatever notation you use, the definition is, is always something like this. 
in its simplest form, it's the percent change in quantity demanded. That's what that notation means. Percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent... Ah, uh, that's pretty crummy. Oh, percent change in price. So here's what I mean when I say it's two percent changes. If 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 you heard that demand quantity demanded was ten thousand, and quantity demanded jumped up to eleven thousand, I, I think most of you could t say, oh, that's a ten percent increase, right? The one thousand uh, dollar change divided by the original level, ten thousand, that gets you point one. I like to think in proportions, but that 0.1 is the same as 10%. Multiply that 0.1 by 100 and, and you've got percent. Likewise, if, in price, if, if I told you that price started at um, $4 per, let's suppose it's gallons, uh, and then price fell to $3.60, uh, $3.60, well, most of you could say, oh, that 40 cent drop divided by the $4 initial level, well, that's, uh, that's also 10%. So, you know, something about putting one 10% divided by the other 10%, that's going to be, they move in opposite direction, so that's going to be negative one. It was a 10% fall in price, a 10% rise in quantity demand. Anyway, something about putting those two fractions, one on top of the other, is gets students into a muddle. And I, I know it happens. There's nothing that I can say that's going to suddenly make this super easy. Do some practice and realize we're looking for the ratio of a proportionate change or percentage change. I, students usually like percentage changes. I tend to think in proportionate changes. Either, either way, um, it, it's a Percentage change in quantity demanded divided by a percentage change in price. And we're going to see some other elasticities, income elasticity, uh, cross-price elasticity, uh, elasticity of supply. It's always going to be a proportionate change or a percent change in quantity in the numerator. And then the name of the elasticity is going to tell us, is it own price? Is it another goods price? Is it income? What's in the denominator? The name of the elasticity is going to tell us that. Uh, and then one last, well... One last point on this page. Uh, another way we often express the elasticity of demand is the proportionate change in quantity demanded is simply the incremental change in quantity demanded divided by the level of quantity demanded, and then we divide that by the proportionate, the incremental change in price divided by the level of price. So in my in my earlier example where price fell from four dollars to three sixty and quantity demanded rose from ten thousand to eleven thousand, that one thousand unit change in quantity demanded is in the numerator here. The ten thousand dollar sorry, ten thousand gallon I think um, initial level is down in the denominator here. We take that whole thing, we get 0.1, and then we'd calculate the proportionate change in price by saying, oh, that, that change in price was a negative 0.4. So if price fell by 40 cents, which is 0.4 uh, dollars, and then we divide that through by the $4 um, level. So whichever way we did it, we'd get the same, right? The way we first did it was 10% over negative 10%, and we got negative 1. And the way we did it here, we said um, 1,000 divided by 10,000 divided by negative 0.4 divided by 4. That's 0.1 divided by negative 0.1. Well, that's also negative one. So whichever way you do it, you're going to get the same answer. This way, we're going to see with linear demand curves, this, this way of putting it gets to be pretty handy. We'll see that in class on Tuesday. And then there's some dictionary breadth definitions here. Uh, price last, if, if we've got a price elastic demand, that simply means that the elasticity of demand in absolute value, it's always negative, but we tend to talk about it in absolute value is 
greater than one. And simply put, that means the percent change in quantity demanded is greater than, that's the numerator, is greater than the denominator, which is the percent change in price. Um, so that's one case. And, and that simply means a 1% change in price is going to lead to a greater than 1% per, uh, change in quantity demanded in the opposite direction, of course, uh, by the law of demand. Uh, price inelastic demand, the way we said, the, the absolute value of the elasticity is less than 1. And that simply means that the percent change in price is going to be less than the percent change in quantity demanded. So a 1% increase in price is going to lead to a less than one fall in quantity demanded. That's, that's all that this term is saying. And then finally, it could be that those effects are exactly the same. Of course, they're in opposite direction. If we have a, a unit elastic demand, it simply means that the percent change in quantity demanded is just equal in size to the percent change in price. So th those terms come up a lot. So that's what they mean. Made with DoodleCast Pro.